Okay, so basically to give you a little update on the pawpaw situation, I went to the pawpaw festival last weekend and figured out through their website that there was actually a significantly decreased pawpaw harvest this year because of the, there was a late frost and there were some other factors that, that led to there not being as many pawpaws, which was actually kind of encouraging to me because I realized that maybe I didn't do something wrong when I went foraging a couple weeks ago. So yeah, I guess just gonna have to wait until next year. Um, and also I, I was looking on the state park uh, website and I, I figured out that they don't let you like destroy vegetation. So unfortunately I'm not actually, you know, don't bring a machete like I was suggesting if you go pawpaw forging in, in an Ohio state park, cause that would not be a good idea. So I guess we're just gonna have to deal with the spiders the uh, old fashioned way with a stick. But so yeah, anyway, I got a new tree at the pawpaw festival. So I already have two uh, decent sized pawpaw trees. They produced fruit last year and did not this year for probably for reasons that I now know. And um, so I got a new tree, it's just a sapling. It's, it's only you know, a foot and a half tall or so. So we're gonna put that in the ground here pretty soon and I'll probably uh, make a little video about that. Um, so yeah, that's the update right now. So what what else I'm doing right now? Right now I'm um, I I like I enjoy studying languages. I'm not very good at it, but I just do it. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm alright at it, but I I don't. I guess I'm kind of busy, or that's my excuse, and so I'm just not very proficient at it. I'm not a, I'm not a polyglot, but you know. So I'm studying right now Greek, like modern Greek, and uh, Japanese, and so. I'm going over right now. I'm, I'm a. I'm, I've been. I've been doing Greek for quite some time. I've been working on Greek for, for a while. Um, so I'm a little bit more experienced with that one. And I just started Japanese, because, and um, one of the things that kind of led me to start studying Japanese is because of the. I was very. Um, I really enjoyed reading the story of Takashi Nagai or Dr. Takashi Nagai, and I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy, but if you, he's actually Servant of God, Takashi Nagai right now, he, he's up for uh, canonization, or his, his case has been presented for canonization, I think. Um, this guy was really cool, and I would definitely encourage you to look up, look him up and look up the book called Song for Nagasaki, which is his biography. If you are interested in Catholicism or Japanese Catholicism or the origins of radiology um, or anything of that nature, or just want a really, you know, it's a sad story in a lot of ways, but it's also a really inspiring story. So, so I would definitely advise to go look that up. So one of the reasons why I become interested in Japanese, because it would be cool to travel there one day and see Nagasaki. So I've been going over... Um, some some verbs yeah some verbs right now there's some verbs that are like it's really interesting because it's the first non-indo-european language that I, I studied latin in high school i've studied greek and i've had a little bit of spanish but but it's it's interesting the the entire like different way that they conceptualize things so it's it's really cool to kind of try and get a feel for that and i don't know how good i'm probably really bad at it right now but like, take a look at this. So here's the book that I'm using. We've got some exercises in here. And one really, this was a kind of funny thing that I saw. In the numbers, they have, okay, so here's the numbers chapter. This is something that's really interesting. Look at, look at how specific these, so they have these counters and that are used for different classes of things. And look at how so specific, this one is, Flat items such as sheets of paper, sheets, and postage stamps, or bound items such as books, magazines, and notebooks, or smaller, medium-sized animals. It's just oddly specific, but pretty funny. They also have like at least three alphabets, um, which is cool. Like they look really interesting, like the, the actual text, but the uh, three alphabets is a little bit intimidating for a guy that's used to 26 I think we have 26 letters in English. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, but, but really interesting looking writing system. Um, but yeah, not, not the easiest thing to get the hang of. Um, 
like one of the things I'm working on right now is like you have to change these words or you have to change the verb into the um, the polite counterpart. So this is like the chart over here that has all the different types of verbs. Not all of them, but you know, the types that are the focus of the book right now. And then if you go back this way, so in this one, the sentence on number two, it's arawa neko janai. And if I pronounce that wrong and you actually know Japanese, please correct me because I, you know, I don't wanna, don't wanna just, you know, embarrass myself. I also don't want to, you know, um, I wanna respect the uh, language. But, but you can kind of figure out which character is which thing. Um, and then you have, you know, so you, the verb janai is this one right here, which is the negative plain form. So we're gonna have to change this to either one of these two, ja arimasen and, or janai des, but an inu is just dog. But, um, and I'm not really sure what the difference is. I guess this is kind of the standard one and this is something else, but, but I don't know. So yeah, I'm gonna have to, I kind of already put together the first part of the sentence there because that's kind of just copying it down. And then we're gonna have to um, change the verb. So yeah, not too difficult. And here's some of the Greek stuff that I'm working on right now. Just some vocab, um, you know, standard, pretty standard vocab list. Some random sketches of flags on the side there that aren't very good. You know, we have tipota, oti tipota. This is an interesting one because this is not something that I can think of any parallel in English. Um, or you have tipota as, which means anything, but only after a negative. So yeah, this language uh, learning is, is pretty cool. You know, like I said, I'm not like the most prolific at it, but I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not kind of, I don't want to just wait until I have the, you know, a ton of time or I'm going to be really dedicated. You know, it's just like, why not just get a feel for it? You know, even if it's going to be a little bit minimal, like that's all right. Just, just go ahead and jump in and see, see how it goes. Get it, get kind of a basic feel for the language and, and just start, start going. It's, it's can be chill. You know, it doesn't have to be something crazy. Um, so yeah, that, that's been pretty good so far. I don't know, so that's what's going on right now. Uh, nothing nothing too, uh, too crazy. I found, a, I found this really uh, interesting. Um, I'm on the, I've I, you know, sometimes I listen to lo-fi music when I'm studying, so I'm listening to, and I like Catholic lo-fi, you know, um, the channel, uh, it's run by Matt Frad from Pints with Aquinas. But this, I, I just found this other channel called Lo-Fi Catholic that's a lot smaller. And he has one song that's called Landing in Japan with St. Maximilian Kolbe, who is actually, him and Takashi Nagai like knew each other, I think. Um, it's, yeah, Catholic lo-fi Japanese. So I was like, this is, this is great. I won't actually play it here because I don't want to get copyright strike, but this is pretty, this is a very fitting uh, song, I guess, or, or whatever, it's video series of songs, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so I'll get back to you with the uh, pawpaw planting video and uh, maybe some other interesting content coming up. One of the things that I want to try and do is kayak from Griggs Reservoir Park in Columbus up to Bridge Park in Dublin and possibly back. But I don't know if that's going to, I don't know if that's going to happen. Depends on how the temperature is up until, up until then. Because next weekend I'm going, probably going to go down to Athens, um, not Athens, Greece, Athens, Ohio and um, visit uh, the OU Medical School, or at least that's kind of the plan. Um, but we'll see about this kayaking trip, maybe maybe some other interesting stuff, maybe some cooking type of things, like trying to make ginger ale. I, I kind of want to try and do that. Try to make some gluten-free donuts. Um, on, I have a solo stove, one of those fire pits that you can cook on. Um, I mean, you can cook on a lot of fire pits, but this is, you know, it's meant to be cooked on. Um, so maybe try and make some donuts on there, which would be pretty cool. And then maybe also try and build a hydroponic plant growing setup. So that would be, that would be um, really interesting because I've basically, I, the only experience I have with hydroponics is a, a science project that we did in fourth grade science class um, back when I lived in Des Moines. Um, and that was pretty cool, but that was pretty much the only experience with hydroponics that I've had. So, 
I'm gonna have to like maybe look this up and see if I can actually get any experience with this, um, or, or not experience, but you know, get a little bit in the know before I go ahead and, and try this out. Um, and then may, yeah, maybe just go to the hardware store and, and try and put something together. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see if those, those actually happen. But yeah, that's about it for now. Peace out.